Redditors what is the most extreme Darwin award act you have witnessed? What was the aftermath? Had a client told over and over again that he cannot smoke while using oxygen. Told his doctor, told all of his case workers, told all of his family, you will literally burn and die if you keep lighting cigarettes while your cannula is in, you dumbass. Sure enough, he ends up admitted to the air with severe facial burns and plastic tubing melted deep into what little remained of his skin. He lingered in the IQ for a couple of days and died. Set his own damn face on fire after a dozen warnings. He didn't even have to quit smoking, all he had to do was take the tubing off before he lit up. Darwin Award. This dumbass friend of mine Bill thought he was Superman and could leap over a raging bonfire despite nearly 20 people telling him it's a bad idea. Eddie had backed up 3 steps and then tried to jump up and over the 6 feet raging fire. Of course, what we all knew would happen did happen and Super Moran landed right in the middle of the fire, knocking it down and spreading hot ashes and burning embers everywhere. He got burned so badly in multiple places that we now refer to him as third degree. Not exactly witness, but expected outcome. Was studying in dorm room in college. Guy I'm friendly with comes in and asks if I want to snort some Viveran. Correct answer of no given. He proceeds to chop and snort it in front of me. Does not look fun. Then he asks if I want to go swimming in an irrigation ditch as it is super hot. I'm at a rural college in Central Cap and we are surrounded by orchards. They use irrigation ditches to get water out to the orchards. These can be quite deep. But the thing is they also go under roads and bridges. They tend to have filtration screen. So debris does not get under road slash bridge. If you get stuck up against the filter. Elmort. So I of course explained this to my viver and snorting friend. He claims to be a sailor and will not have a problem. A few hours later I hear about expected outcome. My father worked at an automotive parts plant. A steel bumper got caught in the press and a guy removed the safety guards and crawled in. A second guy saw this and went after him to pull him out. The press fell and they both got crushed beyond recognition. Never bypass any safety guard. Watched a lady slam into a pole and the pole snaps and falls across the hood. The transformer slams the ground and the wires are draped across the car. She jumps out and starts pulling wires off the truck while I'm running and yelling stop. Stop. Don't tell and she gets electrocuted and thrown on her ass. I've already called 911 by this point and told them the situation. She's completely unresponsive as I'm slapping her face and checking her pulse. I realize she has two kids in the truck and now I'm terrified they are going to be electrocuted, so I yell at them to not move. My friend starts CPR, we are ex-lifeguards, on the lady and I get to the kids. Not knowing what wires do what, I got them to climb out the back window into the truck bed. At that moment, the mom suddenly wakes up and immediately attacks my friend. We are wrestling this deranged hair burnt alcohol smelling lady to the ground, so she doesn't electrocute herself again when a police officer arrives. He and the Ents took everything from there as we explained everything. Apparently the woman was drunk as hell at 3pm and drove her and her kids into a telephone pole after a fight with the dad who had custody of them. Honestly I can't believe she was still alive. That shock should have toasted her. On an African safari we drove by hippo pond. Hippos, in case you don't know, are the biggest killer of humans in Africa. So we are being cautious, respectful, all that jazz. We start driving off. As we go, a truck pulls up, and this group of tourists comes charging out, whooping, hooting, and hollering. They're like OMG hippos. Selfie time. They go wading in the water, and are generally just being huge dicks. Last thing I saw, before we drove away was one of the hippos breaking off from the main group, heading ominously towards them. In the days following, I tried to find reports of hippo attacks on tourists, but couldn't find anything, so maybe nothing happened. Pro tip, though, guys if you ever see a hippo pond leave them the fuck alone. They absolutely can kill you. This was a ways back, but some tree huggers were protesting a freight train that was passing through that was carrying a nuclear warhead to some place. So of course, some asshole decided he could stop the train by sitting on the tracks. Just after a curve where the train couldn't possibly see him in time. Thinking the train was going to stop like a truck if you were blocking a road. 
this dumb fuck actually stayed on the track when he saw it wasn't going to stop, had more than plenty of time to move out of the way, and lost both legs, then was blaming them afterwards. That was a whole new level of dumb fuckery I never knew existed. A few weeks ago a guy from out the road was overtaking a truck on the M18 and tried to make the exit. It's not a full high speed exit. It's 90 degrees and you really have to slow down for this one. But for whatever reason he was still in the passing lane. So he pulled front of the truck, hit the brakes, and didn't make it. Trucks can't stop on a dime, it plowed into his van, flipping it and sending him and his van about 20 meters up the embankment. It took the services a few hours to pick all the pieces of him off the road. My dad is a safety specialist at a printing company. He had a few good stories, but this one really takes the cake. So, one day at work some dude notices a rattlesnake on company grounds. Some people are called, and a small crowd of other employees gathers to take a look at it from a safe distance. Everything is under control. Then one of the employees gets a great idea. He rushes at the snake and attempts to grab it with his bare hands. This went about as well as you would expect. One that comes to mind in my own life. My buddy and I were walking along these train tracks. All is well, no trains, just having a stroll. So we come to this bridge and we laugh. Remember that scene in Stand By Me where they have to run from the train? Haha, <laughs> that would never happen. So instead of heeding common sense we begin to cross the bridge. It's not massive. Perhaps 500 meters or so. And we are about halfway when. Well you all know where this was going. A train is coming behind us. Now I looked and noticed that the train was on the opposite set of tracks. So I was convinced that while we were in pretty serious danger, if we didn't make it, we probably won't die as long as we didn't get sucked under somehow. Alas we still ran like hell and my buddy was ahead of me screaming slash laughing run you run. So we booked it as fast as we could. Now remember, we could have actually ran towards the train, and got off the bridge much easier lol, but instinct I suppose, said run from the oncoming train. So we ran and ran without looking back. He made it off about 2 to 3 seconds before me, and then I made it just in time for the train to was past, as I suspected it was on the other tracks, so we were relatively safe, unless the wind slash force had sucked us in. However as I stood there, quite close to the tracks still, within literally 2 seconds of the train coming another train wished past on the tracks we were on. So had we not started running right when we did, or if we fell, one or both of us would have died. Me and my buddy, we decided to go rock climbing. Only problem was we didn't bring our gear, because we have no gear, because we are not rock climbers. So we get about halfway up this 40 foot face and realize we just crossed the line between bravery and stupidity. Can't climb up any higher can climb back down. Luckily there were people there that were rock climbers who came to rescue us. They said we were idiots to which we immediately agreed. Two guys I went to high school with were apparently out on a boat along a river. They decided they wanted to walk across a bridge for freight trains for some insane reason. They dock their boat and climb up to walk on the bridge. Well sure enough a train comes. I don't know the full details, but from what I understand one jumped off, and the other tried running for it, but didn't make it in time, and got creamed by the train. Took them two days to search for him. One of my first apartments I ever had, was a proper slum. The landlord was a born and a money spoiled asshole who was so cheap I'd bet he'd straighten bend nails to save a penny. I had a myriad of issues with the apartment, which he would always half ass fix. There are many stories, but the closest to a Darwin award I ever saw him get was this. The place was an icebox the first, and only, winter I lived there. When I finally complained he brought some pose old as hell space heater. This thing lasted about 2 weeks at most and then died. His next solution was, him, just turn on the oven and leave it open. Me, are you serious? I know I don't pay electric, but that's not a good idea for a lot of reasons. Him, I know, but it'll be short term, so just do it for now. So I did. The short term solution lasted about 2 weeks before the stove blew out. Who would have guessed? I'll let him know, and after about a week of a freezing apartment, and microwaved meals he comes to replace the oven. The one that was there plugged in. The new one needs to be wired directly. Should be simple. Replace the outlet. He proceeds to do this without turning off the power to the kitchen. 
about 3 minutes and he gets shocked so bad he has to sit down and recover. I almost called an ambulance, but a few minutes later he seemed fine, and he was a prick anyway, so whatever. He eventually finished, after taking my advice, and turning off the power. Hold on to your asses, because here comes the best part. His job. Elementary school shop teacher. Didn't see the act itself, but saw the aftermath. Had to go clean up a body fluid in the air of the hospital I worked at. Guy had climbed over a resort wire top fence to get into some restricted area, I think a water district pump house. On the way in he slipped, and the razor wire sliced his scrotum open. The fluid I was cleaning up was a mix of blood, urine and what I can only assume, was leakage from his colon. Keep in mind, the Darwin Award is for people who remove themselves from the gene pool, through one method or another. Story from growing up in a poor part of Scotland. To set up the area I lived in we had someone die from falling into an abandoned mine shaft and the only good thing we ever really done was discovering penicillin which was because the lad didn't clean up after himself. So next to my old secondary school was a theme park where a lot of local kids worked during the summer. This meant a bunch of 18 year olds that barely know where their feet are have jobs operating somewhat complicated machinery. So this one kid, I could find his name, but not going to out the poor lad, has the job of operating a rat ride, stops midway through. So this kid operating the ride, instead of just getting a maintenance guy, to decides to just push the cart. He pushes the cart and trips. So to not fall off the side he grabs the cart. Rat ride proceeds to go around a bend, so the kid goes flying off the ride and falls from pretty far up. Poor lad died soon after. I've seen many accidents where people died because of their rash driving but one incident stands out and scares me even now. Two youngsters on a bike with no helmets were driving rashly at 90 kmph and they decided not to slow down on a curve so the guy who was driving it tried to overtake some car from the left but hit the car's side mirror and fell down, their heads hit the ground and they split open with all their brains being spilled out. It was a horrible sight. Around here in May, usually around May 2nd to 4th weekend, they have boating events on the local rivers. These usually involve lots of unsafe watercrafts and drinking. So in general it's a Darwin award waiting to happen. This particular year we had quite a bit of snow melt and the rivers were running very fast and deep. I was surprised they decided to go through with the event as I was certain someone would die. Sure enough, a canoeist hit some submerged debris, fell in the water, no life jacket, was swept away by the current and died. I'm always amazed that people treat water so cavalierly. We had a guy who thought sleeping in the baler, while hiding himself with cardboard somehow made him a genius. One long night we thought he was in the restroom, and threw our cardboard into the baler, and turned it on. We almost crushed the dumbass, if it weren't for me who suggested we empty the baler before we jam it and stopped it. We nearly shit ourselves when he jumped out the fucking thing and ran away to clock out and leave. We never saw him again, so I assume he quit or someone reported it and he was fired. Also you can't hear shit when that thing is on. That thing is about as loud as a train horn and it doesn't stop until the thing has compressed and decompressed. Screaming wouldn't have helped him as the sound of the bailer would have drowned him out. I'm just glad I didn't have to witness a human body being crushed and possibly explode while working a soul crushing job. I'm already hating my life I don't need to see that kind of shit in my life too. Wasn't there but a dude I used to drink with stopped showing at the pub and when I finally met up with him, he told me he was riding his bike home at night, rounded a corner and hit a cow, shattered his wrists and lost both his testicles and most of his penis to the fairing of the bike going over it. First year of college spring break South Padre Island. Num Nuts decides to die from hotel balcony slash window to pull from xxxx floor. Doesn't make it, as the horizontal to clear was at least 15 to 16 feet. The sound of him bouncing into the water is haunting. Num Nuts dies shortly after at hospital. Pool closed for like 2 days. There's a trail I used to walk my dog at. Off the trail only about 10 feet is a small cliff, 15 feet high going up the hill, and it is all loose rock. Because it is so small, lots of people love to try and climb it, despite the sign saying not to climb the little cliff. Saw two kids, maybe 12 to 13, climbing the little cliff, one grabs a rock and pulls it right off the cliff. 
He fell down a good 9 feet, and so did the rock, right onto his face. He was dead before his parents even knew what happened. <laughs> Me. At 13 I wondered if I could stand on the crossbar of my handlebars while cruising down a steep asshole in town. Turns out I could, until I couldn't. Lost my balance, fell backwards, hitting the center of my back right on the seat of the bike, back of my head hit the rear tire, and all at the tremendous speed I was already going down the hill. After gravity worked its magic, and Newton and Darwin high-fived in the afterlife, things were in rough shape. I looked like a cross between a human pretzel and a bike pretzel. Looked a mess, but aside from some road rash, no lasting damage. Cold been phenomenally worse. One bystander was a mix of emotions. She thought it was insane what I was trying to do, amazed I succeeded for a short time, then terrified as the accident unfolded, then amazed I wasn't dead. 